Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Bored now, back with you. I don't know why I asked you how it going, since it's a video. But yes, this is going to be another new television review, and it's another Netflix series. So this is a new horror anthology, which they've recently put up, probably this week. I just came across it today, and I thought, oh, okay. I'd check that out, since it's an anthology and quite short. And it is called Blood Ride, so pretty promising title already. And it says when you go on it on Netflix, it says you, you can watch the episodes in any order, although that kind of goes without saying with, with an anthology, unless there's going to be like kind of thematic links. But so, yeah, I thought I'd check this out. And obviously, with I think there's only like six episodes, so I'll probably do all, all episodes for this channel and then you guys can get a feel for if it might be something which you want to check out so yeah i'm going to be doing plenty of content in the coming days with with you all sort of stuck inside and, and what have you so i hope i can keep you entertained and yeah i'm going to give this series a go in any case so the first episode is called ultimate sacrifice or that's the first one which randomly came up for me so I thought it's as good as any to try and I think as as far as like thematic links which a lot of anthologies tend to have I think the, the only one so far is I mean obviously it's called Blood Ride and it actually opens with this you know quite atmospheric sort of scene with like a bus during the night and in the back you get all these like kind of sinister looking characters and they, they they appear to have blood on them so but i think maybe the theme is going to be people like traveling to a different location and there's going to be obviously dark secrets and yeah stuff like that in fact dark sacrifices or all that sort of stuff so i think that's going to be the sort of link between the stories <laughs> So this is Scandi set, although the first one is, I'm not sure if every episode is going to be like Scandi set, but this, this one was set somewhere in Scandinavia, either, either Sweden or Denmark, I, I would guess. And it's about, Molly's like the lead character and she's this, this woman who, her and her family, she's got her husband and and a daughter and they move to the countryside and whereas the daughter and husband seem excited for their new life and seem to be settling into the new surroundings molly is not so keen she's very much a city person in fact before we get to them going to the country we see her going for like a big city job interview which is or or there's talk of it well, I can't, it's spoilers, but anyway, I think we're, we're led to believe it's her going to the job interview. It's full spoilers anyway, since it's an anthology, but in any case, that's like a few months or whatever before the, where the story is set. So, daughter and husband both happy, Molly not so much, she's missing big city life. And as I said, full spoilers, so, so what happens is the neighbours in a typical kind of horror type setup seem all friendly and quaint and eager to meet them. So as soon as they arrive in, they meet a couple of the neighbours and they're kind of this picturesque, pristine type couple and they're like, because the husband, Leon, mentions, well, yeah, this house it needs a lot of work doing and the neighbours immediately chip in with yeah sure we'll do that we'll get some people round from the town and we'll all muck in and chip and obviously the husband thinks oh great that that's great so he doesn't think anything of it whereas Molly the wife is, is more suspicious and it's definitely like ticking those boxes like winking at the audience that the this couple is yeah 
they're just too pristine, too friendly. It's kind of wink wink at the audience and immediately you get that classic sort of horror like symbol of like the black cat which means means something bad basically something darkness lurking um and you almost get this quite cliche sort of thing where molly's family they've got a dog like a a cute little white dog and it's almost like light and dark almost if you want to read it as simple as that but yeah molly's obviously very suspicious she she's talking about well they're very weird that the way they pet their dogs they're just too enthusiastic and it's actually really creepy the what the way like three minutes into meeting us they're offering to like work on the house and help us out and i have to say folks call me cynical but i'm with molly on this one i would be like whoa whoa i've, I've just got here let's let's build a relationship let's let's get to know each other first don't go zooming this this far ahead i, I would but because it's a horror anthology and because we know the way these sort of stories go, I think we're obviously in tune to then there's going to be something going on. And you, you get all this imagery, you get the weird kind of, I think they're meant to be sisters or neighbours who approach Molly when the town get together. And yeah they're holding cats enthusiastically and smiling and 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 that 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 becomes the mystery but the whole reveal is that the town is like it's on like traditional viking land and these neighbors have figured out or the idea anyway is that you get good fortune if you sacrifice an animal and that's what molly she goes for a run one morning and and wanders upon them sacrificing they've got two cats so they sacrifice one of the cats and obviously then they have to come clean with molly and they they tell tell her yeah we've discovered in the past because a neighbor had cancer and we sacrificed his dog and lo and behold the cancer was was no more so you have good fortune if you sacrifice a pet um but as it goes on it plays with the rules and it's it's clearly very very tongue-in-cheek so so molly there's like uh, like a mouse that's like bothering her in in like the basement so she goes and sacrifices that and she then goes and plays the lottery and she only gets like 40 40 krone or whatever it was and i do like the line where she says uh, i sacrificed a mouse and i only got 40 krona and then that's where they start playing with like the rules because they tell molly well you you didn't really love that animal so like the sacrifice sort of matches you know what what you get sort of thing so she ups the ante and she, she god damn it she, she ends up ki- killing the family dog the, the the husband and daughter have gone away and she kills the damn dog um and again they question this because she later like plays the lottery she she tunes in for the lottery draw and she's like one number away she doesn't quite get the jackpot so she wins some money but she doesn't get the jackpot she's just one number out so she's furious she thinks well come on i i sacrificed the family dog now why why didn't i get the jackpot and again that they sort of question her well did you really love the dog and this is what like leads to like the twist ending because Molly comes clean to Leon about what happened. She he, she shows him the body of the dog in the woods, and yeah. So obviously Leon, as he would, you know, well adjusted. It's like you've lost it. You've clearly snapped. So he loses it, and he, Molly's trying to rationalise it, saying, "I did it for us." And there's a struggle, and she's about to kill Leon, but then the daughter we've seen when they sneaked out she she heard them and awoke so she catches molly in the act and she saves 
Leon basically there's a struggle and it cuts between like the scene we started with so it's they're talking about like this this really rich um, girl who they're considering hiring for this new position and it, it sort of set you up to think then then it's going to be Molly but the twist is it's actually the daughter because the daughter in, in this struggle kills Molly so Molly was planning on you know thinking well if I kill Leon this is someone I really love so that will give me the good fortune I'm after but because the daughter shows up it escalates Molly's like good fortune is is transferred to the daughter um, and she's in the chair at the end and she's got a cat which I like that touch as well but it also suggests that she killed Leon as well because they don't actually show you what happened to Leon um, it says he, he just disappeared now it's sort of funny because when when I can't remember the daughter's name but when she kills Molly she doesn't actually know about this this like this sort of thing so I'm assuming maybe she found out about it later and off to, off to dad as well in which case you've got you've got the set really with the two parents um or maybe they're just maybe she she didn't kill him maybe you just left to think that but I do like the ending actually I think that's quite a smart twist and it's like this irony about Molly wanting what the daughter ends up getting sort of thing like the daughter didn't even want it but she ended up getting it through circumstances because she stumbled upon this and obviously you know saved her dad and ended up killing Molly so I do like that sort of irony um the 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 story itself i i don't think it's it's really that good there, there's not too much to it i think things escalate a bit too quickly and it is one of those where you think well you could really do something with this if it was fleshed out you could do this in a film or you could just have a longer like episode doing this story as i said it, it escalates a bit too quickly and you kind of don't really buy that Molly's at this stage where she would like do this stuff. It, there's just nothing to it. There's nothing to to make you think that she's really this down. And she she okay, she's a bit put out about um, moving to the country and stuff. But is that enough to make her think I need this good fortune or oh, I've got bad luck? It's just a little bit weak, and she's only been there a couple of days. I mean, come on, Molly, give it, give it a chance. But anyway, they they play with it, but it's it's not the best best episode, I have to say. But obviously, anthologies, you get some good, some bad. We'll see. I mean, one thing I'll say about this is, I think I'm not too sure because it's it's quite for an anthology. There's I guess because of the Netflix money behind it, there's quite a lot of production behind it, or it does have the, not not that it's like huge budget, but it does have that more high end sort of feel. Um, I, I did enjoy like the Hitchcocky and noirish style music at the start, but I do wonder if maybe for for this sort of horror anthology, if it's a, a bit maybe too much money put into it too much sort of style but we'll see anyway that's the first episode and i can probably wax these out in like 10 minute chunks or, or maybe less since it's an anthology but that's my re first review of the first episode of blood ride and i'll be back with more soon thanks for listening see you guys soon